Thank you, Father Kelly, uh, Father Becker, Reverend Fathers, any honored guests, and my dear brothers. My brothers, it is a joy and an honor to be with you uh, sharing my vocation story this evening. I've sat in your sp seats for two years now, uh, waiting this time, and it's given me a lot of time to pray and go through my own vocation story and the gifts that I've received from the Lord and how he's brought me here. I would first and foremost love to say thank you to my parents, Steve and Caroline, who, well, I didn't realize it, bringing me to Mass all those years, it, it worked. <laughs> um, it brought me here, all the grace was stored up, and eventually God broke through and he reached me, and thank you. That's all I can say to that. All right, so I started off as a run-of-the-mill homeschooled kid. I was, <laughs> as most of you know already, uh, I was very skinny, uh, but I love being active. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I still am, and, <laughs> and I love being outside, I love being active, I love playing with my uh, siblings, I have two, two wonderful brothers and one sister, so I love playing football, uh, keeping up on the NFL, seeing what was going on, and just being active. Um, my first memory I really have of encountering God was with my picture Bible when I was in about fifth grade, and it's the, I was reading through it because it was cartoons. I love that. I love comic books. I love superheroes. And so one of the most heroic scenes I've ever read in the Bible was this passage from Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8, where Isaiah is there, and the angels and God are asking, whom shall we send? Who will go for us? And Isaiah simply replies, here I am. Send me. And I remember like stopping there and thinking, oh, that's cool. And <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, I didn't know A-R-R-R -R -R yet, so I couldn't really <laughs> go into that any further. Thank you, Father Kelly, for that. You, you first year guys, you'll get that in your second year. Um, and so that was the first connection I really felt with God, and I just kind of shrugged it off. And, you know, I probably went and I played tennis or football or something. Um, through, through the rest of uh, my middle school and grade school, I really carried a cross with my juvenile arthritis, uh, and it was something I struggled with. And it was this pain that I had in my hands and my wrists and my knees and my ankles. And it kept me from doing a lot of things that I loved. Tennis, I loved, you know, being outside playing football. It kept me from doing those things. And I felt abandoned by, by God in that. I felt abandoned by the Father. And it made me really embittered towards God until I went on a retreat my freshman year of high school. So like I said, my parents kind of forced me to be involved in religion. Now I'm thankful for that. They made me go through the confirmation program at the Church of St. Paul's, and on that retreat, so this was two weeks before receiving the gift of confirmation, and on that retreat, I was really excited. I was like, something's going to happen. I'm not really sure what. And on that retreat, the Lord gave me first and foremost the gift of faith, the gift to finally acknowledge who he is and how much he loves me. He did this as I've prayed through this with scripture and with the Psalms here at SJV, um, Psalm 27, of you my heart has spoken, seek his face, that was revealed to me. And this is eternal life, to know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Uh, John 17, verse 3. And, but the most important thing I took from that, I took from that time in adoration, that time in silence, was that Jesus Christ was everything I'd ever wanted. And I realized how unhappy I was in pursuing my lustful passions, in trying to be the greatest tennis player possible, in trying to do things for me, and always going for me. And so I finally, I gave, I gave up, I surrendered, I gave my life to Jesus, and it was good. And so I started to get more involved at the Church of St. Paul's, and from that moment on, I really felt that call to be a saint. I, I'd never really felt that before, but now there, it was there, and I wanted to be a saint, and I figured, well, I'll be like Jason Everett, and I'll have a bunch of kids and be married and be that kind of saint. Um, little did I know what God had in store for me. So when I was 16, I went on a mission trip. It was called Catholic, uh, it was C, uh, Catholic, I can't remember the name of it now. It's the most important retreat, uh, most important <laughs> mission trip uh, I took in high school, but Catholic Youth Camp, that's what it was called. And so I go on this, and I there's something I noticed, something that was different about that mission trip. There was this priest there, and his name was Father Roger. He's my priest hero. He's a priest of Bismarck, North Dakota, so good job, Bismarck guys. Uh, <laughs> and there was just something beautiful about this priest, the way he held Jesus Christ in his hands in the Eucharist, the way he looked at him, 
like it was the entire world in front of him, and it was. And I watched him kind of creepily. You know, I watched his priest, and I watched the way he loved these children that were there. And I received something from that, and that was the desire for priesthood. And on that mission trip, so there was a really cute girl. And <laughs> as most vocation stories share, uh, one of those cute girls, right? And so I'm flirting back and forth with this girl. And I remember we were playing with these kids on this mission trip. And, I, and it was evening, it was, the sun was setting, it was picturesque, it was beautiful. And she looks at me and she says, oh, Timmy, you'd be such a great dad. And, <laughs> and I was like, that's everything I've ever wanted. There we go. Like, I pick you up, we ride off into the sunset, and that's history, right? But, but in that, I realized that I wanted something different, and there was a different desire on my heart. And by the grace of the Holy Spirit, my youth minister spoke up, and he said, he said, Timmy, you'd be a great dad, but you'll be an even better priest. And that is something that really reached into the depths of my heart. And I started to run from <laughs> because I was, I was really scared. I didn't know what to do with that. And I tried praying with that. And the more I prayed with it, the more I realized that I couldn't run from this any longer. This, it was peace. It was joy. And so my youth ministry said, all right, Timmy, all right, what are you doing Thursday night? And it was around the time of a Vianney visit. Little did I know, though. And he said, and I said, oh, nothing. I'm homeschooled. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it wasn't the youth ministry night at our church, so I had nothing going on. He said, come to seminary. Come check it out. And I said, that's weird, but okay. And so I go, and I come on a Vianney visit, and I experience the joy of Christ, the joy of brotherhood. I see these men, and I see how they live day to day, always focused on Jesus Christ in that tabernacle. And that was something that never left me, something that stayed with me through high school. And so I stopped running. I started going back to adoration again, started praying with the priesthood. And then, yeah, my senior year, I started filling out the application. I really struggled my senior year. A lot of my friends uh, left me for the party life, and I didn't really understand that. Uh, but even in the midst of that, my friends abandoning me, leaving me, Jesus never did. I always got to run back to him in an adoration chapel, and he was the eternal light, the life that was in me, that kept me going. And so I continued on the application, and I took forever on it. It took forever. But by the grace of God, I finished it. Uh, I actually it wasn't very easy. I didn't get accepted to St. Thomas at first, so I had to reapply. Um, but by the grace of God, I was accepted, and everything worked out to come to SJV. And I gave up a lot to come to SJV. Of course, there was that beautiful woman I had to give up. There was uh, the option to go to Benedictine College to study. But this was where God wanted me to go. And even though I was really nervous when I first showed up here, I knew that this was where God wanted me to be. So imagine uh, little Timmy, and he's out in the SJV parking lot, and I'm with my parents, and I'm getting ready to move in, and Father Gitter comes out. He says, hi, I'm Father Gitter. <laughs> and I say, hi, I'm Father Tim. <laughs> and, which was, I automatically, I just correct, corrected myself, and he was like, give, give us some time to work first, Tim. <laughs> and so ever since coming to SJV, it has been one of the, the second greatest gift I've ever received, the first greatest gift being that faith realizing that Jesus was everything I'd ever wanted. And this is such a beautiful place. Um, Jesus is revealing to me my desire more and more to be a priest every single day. And I pray that Jesus Christ, you know, he yearns for you. I pray that you realize that he is everything that you have ever wanted. And with joy, my brothers, I, I say, praise be Jesus Christ. Amen.